When people think about base building in a multiplayer game, they usually imagine a simple place to store their gear, maybe craft upgrades for their armor or weapons. It's a place to plan your next mission and fall back to when, when you lose control. And anyone who's ever played Valheim knows exactly what I'm talking about. In my mind, a base isn't just a symbol of progress or a place to store that rare loot that you found on the last mission. I mean, sure, you could have a simple habitation unit, a few storage containers, and a place to park your ship. But for the player or organization that's thinking a lot bigger, Star Citizen offers something unique in terms of what's possible. In this video, I'm going to focus on how bases can be used to make money in the game. If I were running a small to medium-sized organization, one of the first orders of business would be to identify potential sites to build the company headquarters. Ideally, you'd want to find a spot in a centralized location in the primary solar system that your organization operates out of. We'll use Stanton as an example since it's the one we're all familiar with. Just look at the star map and ask yourself which planet makes the most sense to build on if you plan to run activities throughout the entire system. For me, the heart says Microtech. It's, it's beautiful. The snow, the trees, New Babbage. But my head says Hurston. And here's why. It's the planet that's closest to the sun, yet far enough away to have comfortable temperature levels. It has a breathable atmosphere, so you can take your helmet off outside. And based on the lore of the Hurston Corporation, I would expect it to have very loose, if any, environmental laws, which could be an important factor if you plan to install refineries or manufacturing plants. And because Hurston's orbit is so close to the star, it will always be in a relatively in the same place year-round. And that's going to be important when CIG turns on planetary orbits and, and they all move at different speeds. The distances between planets will vary significantly for the outer planets, but the closer ones will see less extreme changes. So you, you found your spot. Once the site is claimed, you would then start planning your building placements and moving in materials with your and your Pioneer or your Galaxy, whatever base building ship you choose. You should prioritize the building order based on essential needs first. And it's hard to know exactly what that order will look like right now, but I believe it'll go something like this. I would build habitation units first since they provide shelter from the elements and a place to log in and out of the game. I would then build the electrical grid, the power generators. Uh, the type will depend on what type of planet you're on. I think solar and wind should be very effective on a place like Hurston. Now, an open question is whether CIG will allow you to divert excess power from your ship into your base electrical grid. If that's the case, then you could simply start with putting down the transmission lines and then bring in your Caterpillar or other large ship and plug its power supply into the base. I hope that we can do that. I think that would that would be that would create a lot of a lot of efficiencies with with how you could dedicate your your resources early on in base building if you don't have to set up a whole power generator first you could just use your ship's power so 
we've got the power. Now next I would build the water extractors or processing plant to supply water to the base. And then next comes storage. And this is really important. Anyone who's ever played a game with me will tell you that I'm big on having a lot of organized and labeled storage space. So the warehouses would be going up. And I think the next the next thing I would focus on is establishing a food supply, such as a farm or fishing operation. Not that you would want to fish on Hurston, but you, you get my point. Now with food, I think this is your first need where players can actually make a choice. It might make sense to hold off on, on food production and just import non-perishable items from the market. So with those essentials covered, I would move on to the second tier of facilities needed. And with that, I would start with, with placing landing pads and hangars. You need to have a place that's organized and a place to park your and store your ships. And I understand in the early days when the world is new, you can haphazardly park wherever, but as soon as the resources, as soon as you have the resources, it would be a good idea to class up a bit. So once the hangars are built, I think the next thing you'll want to build would be a facility to repair and rearm your ships. Depending on the security status of the system or your organization's reputation, for that matter, the next order of business might be to build, build out defensive systems. This would be designed with the level of threats in mind as well as what you're trying to protect. At a basic level, you'd want automated anti-air, anti-vehicle personnel turrets. You might even invest in a shield generator for that extra layer of protection. All of these systems should be designed with redundancy in mind. You might have multiple but separated power supplies running your defenses and targeting systems, and the power grid should be hardened against electronic warfare and EMPs because that's going to be a thing in the game. I believe that was discussed briefly during the CitizenCon presentation on base building. So with all of the above completed, you have a good basic level base. The next set of upgrades would be economic. Remember, this video is about making money with your, with your base. So depending on what your goals are, you might install ore refineries, fuel manufacturing plants, equipment to produce ammo or repair, FPS gear. This could be shared by the entire organization or even leased out to customers that might happen upon your base. If you plan to offer these services to outsiders, I would certainly build visitor parking areas and make sure there's separation between sensitive locations and where visitors are allowed to wander. You don't want someone wandering into the, uh, the power relays that can turn off your, your turrets, for example, or your shield generators. So, so I would block that area off and, and make sure that if you are selling out of your base, then you have an eye on, on where customers and visitors can, can wander to. So at this point, you have a solid operation going. The next question would be how much you want to scale. I think some organizations will certainly set up entire manufacturing operations. Let's say, for example, you want to build P4 rifles. You want to build them from start to finish. First, you'll go get your license from Bering, which we won't get into here because it's covered in my manufacturing video. recommend checking that out. Then you'll need to plan out your supply network. And this is where some experience with logistics and supply chain management would be helpful. 
I think the, the best way to illustrate this example would be to, to make some assumptions. Let's say to build a P4, you need a frame, a barrel, a stock, and the internal components. I hope it's actually a lot more in depth than this, but for the purposes of this video, I want to keep this example simple. Now to build the frame, you need to acquire the materials. Let's say that's iron and aluminum. You can get these materials in several ways, such as purchasing them on the market and bringing them to your plant where you can, where you can mine them yourself to maximize your long-term profitability. If you choose to go the mining route, you would look to find a large ore deposit on a planet or moon. Let's say we find, or even an asteroid belt for that matter, you could bring in your Orion and, and uh, harvest the ore there, but it's still unclear at this point how asteroid mining will work. If it's going to be a, a large deposit you can claim or just wander around in the belt and hope and hope you happen to come across several asteroids to mine. So that that's still up in the air in, in my view. I think the most reliable form of of ore and, and resource extraction will be planet side. But I you know I'm happy to be proven wrong. So back on topic, let's say we find our iron on Hurston's moon Aberdeen and our aluminum on Art Corp's moon Walla. I, I think depending on the size of the underground deposits and the extraction rates, you would want to set up at least basic at least a basic mining outpost on each moon. This would look something like a habitation unit, electrical grid, extractors, a warehouse, and a landing pad. Maybe a few defensive turrets is needed. So how would you operate something like this? Well, I don't think a mining outpost is a place where players will want to spend all of their time. You would hire NPCs to perform routine maintenance activities and report on the operation. An organization would assign shifts to real players to check in from time to time and do the things that require human input. I'd imagine this would be done when you're going to pick up a shipment of ore. And regarding human input, I want to go off on a little bit of a tangent for about 30 seconds. I strongly believe that, and this might be a whole separate topic in another video, but I strongly believe that all commerce-related activities of the game should require some form of thoughtful human input, whether that be through maintenance or machine calibration or a series of complex math problems. I'm really indifferent as to which mode CIG goes about making this happen. But this is so important when it comes to preventing botting and real money transactions with in-game currency. Gold farming is a cancer on MMOs. It devalues the currency, leads to runaway inflation, and it cheapens the entire experience for everyone. In EVE Online, for example, there's an entire... Chinese alliance dedicated to farming ISK, which is the in-game in -game interstellar credits, the in-game currency, and they sell it in real money transactions. And this must not be allowed in Star Citizen because it will completely kill the economy. Now, like I said, we may dig more into that in another video, but for now, let's get back on topic. So, we've set up our mining outpost. Now we need to establish a supply route to get essentials such as food, water, and fuel to the outpost and bring mined ore back to headquarters on, Hor on Hurston. I think the best way of going about doing that is first understanding your ore extraction rate and then determining how long it will take to mine the amount of ore that you want to ship home. And let's just say that's three days. So you'll send a player in a cargo ship every three days to pick up the ore. 
I'm a firm believer that cargo ships should never fly empty. You should be hauling things in both directions. In this case, we know that we visit the outpost every three days. So I would use this trip to bring at least three days worth of provisions from headquarters to the outpost. So it looks something like this. The player will load up the items going from headquarters to the mining outpost, then travel to the outpost, unload the items, perform the necessary maintenance, load up the ore and fly home. Depending on how your network is set up and the size of the ship you're flying, you might hit several of your outposts all in one trip. That's whatever's the most efficient way of doing what you need to do. So let's imagine setting up mining operations for each of the, the P4 rifle components that we need to make. Sure, they share some materials in common, but others would need to be sourced, as we said, either through purchasing or, or mining yourself. You might, for example, need to set up a logging operation on Microtech for, for the wood stock. A chromium mine on Daymar to add your iron and aluminum to make stainless steel for the barrel. That would even require another step of refining. And maybe there's a rare material that you can only source from another system. You can spread your supply network as far and wide as you have the capacity to manage. The logistics of something like this would require the cooperation of several people. I can see organizations creating positions for outpost administrators to oversee different portions of the whole operation. Aside from the operations department, you'll also need a good accounting team to manage and to manage the, the bills and pay taxes on all the different operations. And we're barely scratching the surface with what's possible in Star Citizen. But seeing as though we're already at nearly 18 minutes this video, I do want to wrap it up with briefly mentioning solo base building and what that could look like. I realize there are a lot of solo players out there that just want to do their own thing. I believe they could also get a lot of value out of and engage in commerce out of their base. It just won't be on a grand scale. You could be a simple tree farmer with a plot of land on Terra where you grow the rarest hardwoods that fetch a premium from companies like Orig Origin Jump Works or um, the name of that Constellation Phoenix piano manufacturer it escapes me at the moment, but that's that's who would buy your, your rare hardwoods. And that's all perfectly fine and fun gameplay. You could also have some more nefarious options as a smaller operation. You could build a little pop-up drug lab or, or pharmaceutical lab in one of those valleys of Pyro 2. Keep your signature down and do not advertise that you're cranking out batches of Altrusia toxin to sell at Ruin Station or smuggle into Stanton. This would be just a small building hidden in a nondescript valley where a small cutlass flies in and out of once every couple of weeks. And obviously you won't be paying taxes on an operation like this, and you could squeeze it for all it's worth until you're eventually found out and then just move on and build another lab somewhere else. There's so many things that a solo player can do with, with the base building mechanics. But that's all I've got for this video. Hopefully you guys got some value out of these thoughts. Let me know in the comments below and insert the standard like and subscribe language here, and I'll see you in the next video.